So yesterday I had a disengagement with full self-driving in a situation that I've actually never encountered before. And it got me thinking, will FSD version 14 solve for this issue? Specifically, I want you to pay attention to the area that I'm in right now. You could see it's sort of a residential area, one-way road, uh, houses on either side of the street, 25 mile per hour zone. And I want you to pay attention to this red punch buggy right up ahead. You can see he's pulling into his driveway, but he's reversing in, which means that he has to pull forward just a tad bit to then maneuver back and into his driveway. But since this is a single lane road, FSD has to stop and wait for it to pull forward a little bit so that the punch buggy could then push back and into their driveway. And you can see right here, I'm going to pause the video as soon as I disengage. It's going about 25, 23 miles per hour. And again, uh, maybe it, you can argue that I preemptively or prematurely disengaged full self-driving. That is absolutely an argument that I would entertain. But again, human reaction just kicked in. So again, I'm going to pause it right there. You can see the blue line go away, which means that FSD isn't disengaged entirely. And at the time I disengaged it, I'm going 24 miles per hour. Now, if you look how far I am from the punch buggy in front of me, I know it's very difficult to gauge distance on camera, but that's no more than a couple hundred of feet. So 24, 24 miles per hour disengaged, the punch buggy pulled forward a little bit to then reverse onto their driveway. Now, again, this is a busy road. This is a main road. This is not a neighborhood or anything like that. It's a busy residential area, but it's a main road that people use to traverse to different parts of this town. And so again, I disengaged at 24 miles per hour, a couple hundred feet at most. And if I had not disengaged, I assume full self-driving would understand that, hey, there is a situation. Um, but this got me really thinking. This is a clear example of how the Tesla AI team is marketing full self-driving version 14. Specifically, they're saying it's going to be sentient. It's going to be sort of very human-like. It's going to be very proactive. And that's one of the highlights that I want to make here in this specific clip is that I feel as if this situation was a reactive situation with full, full self-driving version 13.2.9. I believe with full self-driving version 14, it's going to be a lot more proactive. In this case, it would have potentially understood what was happening much sooner and would have slowed down much sooner. In this case, I had to disengage because it didn't really understand what was happening. It just reacted to the situation, right? If I didn't disengage. Um, but in version 14, I feel as if these types of situations are going to be improved. I think it's going to be a lot more proactive. It's going to understand and anticipate situations like this much better. In a post on X, Elon Musk confirmed that version 14 goes into early wide release as soon as next week. Then 14.1 about two weeks later, and then 14.2 after that. The initial wide release may still be to an early access or influencer group just to catch the bugs. Tesla will monitor telemetrics, crash rates, edge case failures, and user feedback before expanding further. Now, I believe it's unconfirmed, but I, I believe that FSD V14 is already on public roads used by Tesla employees. That's typically what they've done in the past, and I imagine that they're repeating that same pattern. So don't expect everyone to see it day one, uh, but if you're in the early wave, of course, you might take advantage of that right up front. Right now, in version 13, the system usually reacts only when something like debris or a box actually comes into view. That means sudden swerves or hard braking. With version 14, Tesla's using a model that's 10 times larger with autoregressive training that fuses vision, maps, and fleet data. The idea is that instead of waiting until the last second, the car can start slowing or adjusting lanes earlier, more like a human who notices something down the road. Now, to be clear, Tesla hasn't officially confirmed pothole avoidance, but what we do know is they've teased better handling of dips and uneven roads. In version 13, FSD tends to react once a pedestrian is already stepping into the street, or when another car has already started cutting into your lane. The proactive upgrade in version 14 is about reading intent earlier. Things like a wheel angle, a turn signal, or even the way a pedestrian is looking around could trigger the car to slow down 100 to 200 feet in advance. We've already seen glimpses of this. For example, V13 has braked early for red light runners, sometimes before even a human would react. 
version 14, with its larger model and more training data, could make that type of foresight much more consistent. Parking is another area where FSD has been pretty clunky. Version 13 sometimes overshoots, retries, or even abandons a parking lot maneuver. And when pedestrians appear, it usually only responds once they're directly in front of the car. What I'm expecting in version 14 is more integrated, proactive planning in parking lots. That means smoother recognition of open spaces, better anticipation of where pedestrians are walking, and perhaps even fewer stop-and-go movements. Tesla insiders have even called V14 a master of parking lots, quote-unquote. That might be a hype up, but the goal is a much closer step towards seamless, low-speed navigation. In addition to better parking lot navigation, I expect version 14 to have a better emergency vehicle response system. Today, FSD reacts when it sees flashing lights or hears sirens, but the response isn't always consistent. With version 14, leaks suggest that the system has been upgraded to better read both traffic signals and emergency vehicles. Now, that doesn't mean Tesla has formally confirmed these improvements, but it does line up with the broader design of V14, a larger 10x model, stronger fusion of vision and audio, and a goal of handling more dynamic road situations smoothly. So while it's not guaranteed, I expect that version 14 will improve consistency with traffic lights, and it will also handle emergency vehicles more reliably than it does with version 13. Another prediction that I have when it comes to V14 in terms of proactivity is defensive driving. So today in V13, in dense traffic, it will only adjust once another car cuts too close. It often brakes hard and it creates sort of a ripple effect behind you. My expectation with V14 is instead of waiting, it could maintain extra buffer space proactively, slowing slightly when it senses an aggressive driver nearby or when large vehicles are drifting. This turns the system from a defensive driver into a cautious planner, reducing the sudden stop-and-go jerks that can cause accidents or road rage. One of the biggest complaints users have with version 13 is lane selection. I see this in my comment section from you guys all of the time. The system often picks the wrong lane. For example, moving into a lane that's about to end or staying behind slow traffic when there's a perfectly clear lane next to it. This reactive style forces FSD to make sudden corrections at the very last second, and it can be frustrating for both the driver and everyone else around you. My expectation is with version 14, this might be addressed by making FSD more proactive in how it chooses these lanes. The larger neural network and better fusion of map plus vision data means the car can quote unquote see further ahead and recognize when a lane is ending or when traffic flow is slowing down. So instead of waiting until it's forced to act, the system can gradually shift into the correct lane well in advance, mimicking the way an experienced humor driver plans their moves. One of the big gaps I've personally noticed in version 13 is school zones. Today, full self-driving does not reliably recognize flashing school zone signs or slow down to the posted limits. Most drivers report the system simply continues at the normal road speed unless they intervene manually. My expectation and prediction with version 14 is a proactive upgrade that would make the system smarter and recognize and anticipate these zones much sooner. By fusing high resolution vision, map data, and patterns learned from the Tesla feet, the car could start slowing before it even reaches the flashing lights or crosswalk. So for example, if other Teslas consistently reduce speed in the same stretch during school hours, FSD could learn to approach that zone more cautiously. This would make the system behave more like a human driver who sees the yellow lights a block ahead and instinctively eases off the accelerator. It's not confirmed, but it's one of the most logical, proactive improvements Tesla could deliver with version 14. One area I'll be watching closely with FSD 14 is destination parking, especially parking in the driveway or backing into your garage. Today on version 13, we've seen hints of destination parking show up here and there. Sometimes the car will find a spot and even switch into auto park, but it's really, really inconsistent. Tight places like parking garage, it could require manual help or abandons the attempt entirely. With V14, the expectation, based on multiple reports and leaks, is that Tesla pushes farther toward true destination parking. 
So think of arriving at your home and instead of you babysitting auto park, the car confidently executes the maneuver. A cautious approach down the driveway, a clean alignment, and a controlled back in to the garage using tighter multi-point logic when needed. That multi-point logic in tight parking garage scenarios is specifically called out in community reports, and it's exactly the kind of capability that should translate to garages at home. Now, to be clear, this is not a confirmed feature. It's anticipated, not yet confirmed by Tesla, uh, but it is something that I'd be watching very closely because it has the potential to improve the user experience exponentially. I'll be putting this to the test as soon as FSD 14 lands, and I'll show you exactly how it handles things like lane choices, intersections, school zones, and even parking in the garage. What I'll be looking for is whether Tesla finally makes the shift from reactive driving to proactive driving. If these proactive improvements really show up on the road, FSD 14 could mark one of the biggest leaps we've seen yet. So stick around, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll share my real world results with you as soon as I get V14.